Welcome back to MMA Al Dente. Raul Rosas Jr. vs. Jay Perrin. Raul is 18 years old, stands at 5'9", and he's got a record of 6-0, and which does reflect his age. He is a very inexperienced youngster. I think he's the youngest fighter in UFC history. If not, he's fucking close. But he's... Um, Looked very good. He's a big favorite here over a an experienced fighter for a reason. Because Raul looks awesome. He's got, again, six wins, one TKO, four submissions. All of them come in round one aside from one of his subs. And the only fighter that's really worth a fuck that he's fought was on the Contender Series, Mando Gutierrez. And it was one of the more exciting one-rounded grappling exhibits I've ever seen. Because... Uh, Raul Rosas Jr. just didn't stop. Takedown after takedown and passing and submission attempts, Sulawev stretch attempts. And in the end, I did think he kind of took his foot off the gas in round three, let Mondo back into, not back into the fight, but, you know, uh, he uh, let himself get taken down anyway. So I'm not even saying that's a thing. I'm just saying, you know, uh, with Raul Rosas Jr., somebody that's 6-0 and with no known weaknesses, you have to speculate. So you look to shit like that. But if that is a weakness of his, cardio, Jay Perrin is precisely the guy that could expose that. Jay Perrin is 10-6, and but it's a very deceptive 10-6. and He's, uh... Well, first, I don't know if I went over the stats. He's 29 years old. He's 2 inches shorter than Raul Rosas Jr., and he's got 2 inches of reach. Now to his record. He's 10 and 6. His 10 wins include two TKOs, four submissions, four decisions. His four submissions are all in round two, but they're mostly over garbage opponents. And his losses, he's got six losses, one via submission, and five via decision. This guy's very tough to get out of there, Jay Perrin. And he's shown that at the UFC level, hanging with Mario Batista, who's, you know, finishing uh Brian Kelleher and uh Benito Lopez, and Jay Perrin was able to hang with him. And against Arichi Lang, Jay Perrin not only hung with them, but he took over in round three against Arichi Lang. And I thought it was a very redemptive performance in round three. He clearly lost the fight, but he was the last man standing in a sense. And just, you know, it was a nice moral victory to, for him to have found his range and found some success in that fight after being down two rounds. But, you know, anyway, he's 0-2 in the UFC. But he has shown the toughness and durability that I think he can survive against Raul Rosas Jr. And he's shown the tenacity and cardio that he can take over a fight. Especially if he's able to stuff those takedowns. So, there's definitely some room for Jay Perrin to win here. You know, uh, I think, uh, again, if he had more power, you know, if he was more of a, you know, finisher, and even if he... You know, if he finished any solid fighters, I would be more uh, anxious to back him. I would be more willing to back him here, to play him. But I'm just not because he doesn't have that fight-changing power or anything. He's just, uh, he's a workhorse. And he could outwork Rosas Jr., but it's going to have to be where his takedowns are just ineffective after a certain point, likely in round two. And I don't know if Rosas Jr.'s takedowns are ever going to be that ineffective. You know, this guy, with any doubt I might have from him slowing down against Mondo Gutierrez, he still looked like a damn good fighter for 15 minutes there. And that's really what all we have to, to look, uh, look at, you know, to draw from is that one fight. Because again, every other fight he finished early and they're all worth nothing. Jay Perrin... He's got some solid victories. Diego Silva, Johnny Campbell. These are solid, you know, veteran fighters, regional guys. And those are two guys that he had to beat via decision. Anybody that's tough that Jay Perrin's beaten, it's been via decision. So, he, uh, again, I do trust his cardio, but I just don't trust it against Raul Rosas Jr.'s wrestling. So how I've bet on this fight is I've bet on Rosas Jr. to win by decision, plus 200, and Jay Perrin to win by round three finish flat, plus 2200. I think if he does win, it's a matter of fatigue of cardio, him taking over, and against an 18-year-old suffering some sort of cardio issue, I'll play the round three finish. But 
My primary bet and my prediction is Raul Rosas Jr. plus 200 for the decision. I think his wrestling will be there for him. I do think Jay Perrin will start to, I can't say take over the fight, but he'll start to do better. But I'm trusting Rosas Jr.'s takedowns to be there for him throughout the fight. Uh, certainly enough for him to win the point battle. And uh, without knowing anything about or any having any questions about Rosas' uh, durability, Jay Perrin just doesn't hit hard enough or submit good enough guys for me to uh, trust him to uh, get Raul out of there. So... If the fight does go the distance, generally speaking, the guy with the uh, very strong wrestling is going to win, and that's Raul Rosas Jr. We'll see what happens. Like, share, subscribe, all that horse shit. Check out my other videos.